Namaste. Namaste. I'm Vinod Chaudhary from Nepal. Well, people know me as also the head of the Chaudhary Group, which is now globally known as CG Corp Global. Yeah. And tell me why you're those, here. For those who know Nepal, why why will ring a bell in their head? A product that we are immensely proud of, a brand that has traveled all over the world, and more so post earthquake disaster that Nepal had in 2015, April 25th. We, the family and we are our foundation, which is known as the Chaudhary Foundation, faced the greatest challenge since the existence of our group, family and our foundation's existence in terms of how to handle or how to contribute, how to remain involved in every way we could. Firstly, to deal with the relief part of the work. It was an unprecedented, never in the history. The size of calamity was much beyond, way beyond the capacity of our country to handle, leave alone one foundation. 700,000 homes were damaged. More than 30,000 30, classrooms became unusable. More than 25,000 lives were lost. You know, and despite all the support that was promised, but the ability of managing the resources and taking them where the need is, that in itself was a huge task. We, as Chaudhary Foundation, mobilized our national distribution system, supported the food and uh, water and all the immediately required you know, medical support to the affected areas on one hand, on the other hand, decided to you know, launch a mission under which we were to build 10,000 homes and 100 schools. A small, modest effort in a situation where 700,000 homes are damaged, 10,000 means nothing. We were conscious, but even that we thought was a, a token of our uh, full total involvement and commitment and also a way of our own expression that we are Nepalese and this is the time Nepal who has given us the identity who has given us this profile as an institution as an individual as a family it's our time to give it back to our brothers and sisters of Nepal yeah. That's amazing. You know, you embody what I love about the people I've met from Nepal, which is to both have the power and strength and the humility and giving back. So, I guess, you know, it's, it's all about destiny. You know, you are thrown in a situation where you are led in a path where nothing else matters. It becomes the one single cause of your existence. Our whole group, all our CEOs, our entire family members, we were all totally engaged to do what we could. And that has in fact today completely raised the size and capacity of our foundation and its activities. It has grown, not only it has grown from that being an effective platform without any sense of modesty, for the purpose of the rebuilding effort of schools and homes to a multi-dimensional foundation today which is uh, focusing into livelihood, which is focusing into uh, vocational training, job creation, impact business, creating entrepreneurs with different partners all over the world. I'm here, I've been invited by the Forbes 400 philanthropy organization and uh, we'll be attending that tomorrow. We'll be talking to a number of foundations who are interested to partner with us. We do not uh, charge anything uh, to, for managing the philanthropy effort. As a matter of fact, we as our foundation, we are funded by our own group. All administrative costs are found, funded by our own group. We co-invest with our partners so that the, there is a multiplication of the impact in terms of whatever is spent, you know. So that, that's really being seen and appreciated a lot because you know, given the number of reasons related with the governance, religious with these many sort of uh, complications and complexities that one, one faces even while carrying out 
philanthropy work, yeah. I think our presence and stature of the group is also helpful to cut through the bureaucracy and red tape. So yeah. that's how so we are moving forward and uh, I, I do hope that uh, we'll be able to do more, contribute more. Nepal needs so much more at this juncture, you know, ranging from not only rebuilding effort but also in providing job to the people. We have over uh, half a million Nepalese people going out of Nepal every year looking for job. Yeah. Of course, on one hand, it has given Nepal the ability to sustain. It's become 30% of our country's national GDP. But at the same time, we are beginning to lose capable, strong, working hands which are young. You know, they, they, they get into this, they are getting into a system where they find it easier to go out and work rather than to come and create a situation where we create, where we create job. And that's why the Nepal Social Business Initiative that we've taken forward. Yeah. I'm also here because uh, you know, my book, which we have which was launched more than three years ago in Nepali, you know, with the love and affection of my fellow Nepalese brothers and sisters, remains the best sellers over the last uh, five years, four years. Penguin Random House decided to print an international edition of that, and we recently launched in India, Mumbai, Delhi, and then in Singapore, and now I'm here, and I'm my host, Mr. Mike Perlis, who is a great friend and a, a philanthropist, who in fact has shown me many new facets in the process of trying to give it back to the society. I mean, he, my, many of my conversation with Mike in the course of the trek that we did, a very interesting trek that was last year to Dolpo, in the Dolpo region in Rara, Foxundo, beautiful part of Nepal, opened so many new questions about one's ability, about one's ability in terms of what you, you are able to sort of put together in terms of wealth, in terms of economic power, but more importantly, what you are able to share and give it back. So I'm, I'm so grateful to him and delighted that he's hosting the launch of the book on the 9th at the Forbes uh, Auditorium uh, on the, at the Fifth Avenue. And that, that makes my visit to New York even more memorable from one more very important angle. Yes. Well, you're inspiring to many people, and I hope this visit will inspire even more people to not only do well, but also to continue to give back and show people the true spirit of Nepal? Well, my, my desire and my wish is that not only the Nepalese, but also those people who love Nepal, who've had any form of, like yourself, like any, any kind of an interaction, any kind of an experience of engaging with Nepal, should remain in touch. And I think this book brings in my 50 years of my experience in different activities which involving Nepal and also in the process building perhaps the first Nepal's multinational. Nepal people know as the country of the birth of Lord Buddha to the home of many of the Hindu shrines to the top high five of the eight tallest Himalayan peaks to the Sherpas to the Gorkhas but not many still recognize Nepal as a country which produces world-class brands, products, services, as well as business enterprises which are active in more than 30 countries. So I guess this is an important message that in today's world, given the technology, given the opportunity that exists, nobody is constrained. There is no monopoly by any big country or a big, big B school. Yeah. There can be an entrepreneur anywhere in the world and still you can sign. So this is the message I wanted to give to the young youth, young Nepalese minds, young Nepalese uh, innovative minds that please do not have any kind of a complex. The whole world is open at your footstep, foot door. Very good. Thank you very much.